So let's look at the representation and basic properties of walls. Yeah. So how do we work with them? So about the representation and the basic properties of the walls, we will create a very simple um, drawing. I have a, a guide for myself here. This is what I will use. Uh, you can start from scratch. Whatever you do, it happens the same way. You start the wall tool. That's how you design a wall. And then you will see a list of styles built in the software right, when, right after you installed it. Of course, you can uh, extend this list. This is when we will talk about the wall styles. But right away, the software will start with the default uh, wall. And then when you say that, OK, I have a design here that I would like to follow, uh, you just pick the first point, and then you move your mouse to the desired uh, direction. And you can tell the software that actually on my drawing, I can see uh, 3.6. That's in meters. So I just type uh, 3.6. And I say, OK, that's, that should be 3.6 in length. And then the software continuously allows me to draft and create new and new walls. Let me just create yeah, just drawing. Do it and, and meanwhile, I'll tell, you, I'll tell the, the viewers what we actually see. So what Illish <coughs> is demonstrating now is, is basic uh, CAD tools. You see these greenish uh, guidelines, which actually help you to align either to a, a preset value or to 45 degrees, 90 degrees orthogonally. So this is very. This might be familiar to you who already work in CAD. This is a kind of a visual or drawing aid. Just like now, if you want to make sure that this node is is on level with the one on the top, so just just above it, we can just uh, hold sh hold the shift key and move the mouse key un yeah. until we find the desired position. So we can snap it to another point if we want, just like that. So that way we can just carry on. You see that the blue line that he's sketching is actually the reference line. That's uh, one thing that he did is that he started drawing the wall and then he flipped uh, the wall with the uh, with the keys right in the top right corner. Uh, you can also use the F5 key to to actually toggle between the positions. This is very important because you always have one line where all the measurements are made and you have the wall added in addition to it. Now. One thing that, that you mentioned that you're working in meters, obviously you can, you can change that later on. And there's one other very important thing. You don't need to just add the values uh, as, as they are. You can either add up tinier parts of the same values. So if you don't know the exact measurements and if you have a survey plan like this in front of me, you can just type in the numbers with a plus sign. You can add the uh, factors and you can add modifiers to, to yeah. add the, the value. Now, just like here, uh, the way we can connect these two is that we just hover the mouse key to the point where we actually want to go to, and that gives us the green guidelines. Yep. And then and we then can just snap I it can just it. snap to it. It's like I I would create a literal line in which I you know align my uh, drawing to, but I don't have to draw that line. I just say my intention by just hovering my mouse over there. And whenever I, I close this loop, it will automatically create all the right connections uh, to the walls. And it's also, also automatically creating the, uh, the, the 3D of the model. So whenever you actually, when you create the drawing, you, don't, you do not create the drawing. You create the building itself. And it automatically has these sep right. separate uh, representations, which we uh, talk about when we say it's a section, it's an elevation, it's, a, it's any sort of part of this uh, building. If you could just select one of the walls <coughs> for a moment. And let, let's look at the markers, because you promised that we are going to discuss yeah. them as well. <coughs> so you see that the wall has two uh, faces, one solid line and one dashed. Yeah. What's the difference? Uh, the difference between those two is that if you remember how I drafted this, uh, this um, whole layout, I used the external counter. And that's, yes. the, that's the reference line. And that's, now the software remembers that at, that was the reference line. So whatever I, whenever I change the thickness of the wall, let's say, OK, this should be, I don't know, 0.5 instead of 0.38, then that's the line that keeps its position. You can actually go even beyond that. You can set up uh, the core level and the core, core layer and, and so on. But by default, this is how it works. You can say that, OK, this is the line that stocks there because I have created it this way. You can change it later. There is a command to, to switch the uh, reference line later. But uh, by default, the software understands that of obviously your intention was uh, to create this uh, external contour. So I should keep that. Yes. Now, uh, talking about the selection, what's the difference between, between this and this? So that was the reference line, and the rest is just the other side. Uh, but there, as you can see, if you hover your mouse over these, it, 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 it changes for some reason. That, that always means that you have some sort of interaction with that item. Now, all the markers is, uh, is what, you can, what, what we can see here is the, you know, the rotation, the yes. endpoint, movement. 
the edge, the other edge, and the length. Mm -hmm. Now, if I would like to change the length of this wall, yes. I can just click here and type the length. Or I can just click here and I can say, okay, change length. The difference, be difference between the two is that one time I see the value and I can change the value itself. And if I do this here and I move my mouse and I type, I don't know, one meter, this, w this will not be a one meter long wall. I it see, will change its length with, yeah, it's That's a relative right. change. But the other one was a direct change. So if I would do this, this here, it will be one meter long. And the reason why it kept this point here instead of this point at the end is the uh, direction of the arrow. Mm -hmm. This tells you what will be the change of length, or what will be the direction of the change of the length. Can you flip it? Yeah, you can do that. If you just click here and uh, now I type 0.3, uh, then you know this is how you can change I it. I see, I see. Now, talking about the, uh, the wall structure, let me just undo these. I just use the undo, control Z. Uh, on the keyboard. You can also rotate the, the wall. You can click here and you have all the options. You can uh, move the wall and whenever you click on the edges you will see uh, edge commands. Now if you click here you see a sort of list of edge commands and if you click here you see the same because on both sides you can break apart. You can break the wall apart into two new walls. If for example for any reason I would like to make this shape here when I click here, the software breaks the mm -hmm. wall into two new walls. And sometimes that happens that you need to change the design for any sort of uh, design uh, purposes. But um, when, it, when we create something, I have actually one thing that I can see that it's, it's, it's an interesting uh, thing and I did not cover that. When you would like to create a wall in a certain angle, like for example, um, the question here is if you would like to create a wall with a certain length or in a certain degree, how you can do that? So if you draw a wall and you start it from anywhere, you can start from an existing point or, or from somewhere else, then as you can see, uh, at the right hand side, uh, now we can see this little, um, you know, field with length and inclination. If you would like to uh, fix the length or you would like to fix the, the inclination, you can just uh, hit the, the tabulator key on your keyboard and then the software jumps into the first value. So if now I would like to fix the length, I know that my wall should be three meter long. I just type yes. that and I hit enter and, and now when I move my mouse, I the length see. is fixed. So I can refer to a certain direction and I can, I can be sure that this will be mm -hmm. uh, with a certain so length. So by, by hitting tab again, you can go to the inclination and then you can yeah. add the desired. <laughs> I can say that, okay, this should be 42 degrees. And in that case, this is fixed. And then now I can tell that, okay, in 42 degrees, I would like to create a wall with a length of 2.5, for example. And now I will have a wall uh, with a length of 2.5 in, in the direction of uh, 42 degrees. Perfect. The software by default, this is something that you can change. The software by default uh, understands the horizontal right as the zero and uh, it's counterclockwise. I see, I was about to ask you that where the reference point is. Yeah. Now, going <laughs> back to the markers, uh, are there any differences between the two-dimensional and three-dimensional markers? Uh, what I mean is that if you click on a wall yeah. in 3D, you see markers as well, but what the differences are there? Uh, the differences here is that uh, most of them are, are quite similar, as just as you thought. You will see the rotation, you will see the length, you can mm -hmm. see the arrow, you can see both sides, you can break it apart, and this, this, is, this is quite similar, but we will see uh, this three-axis uh, marker here, which allows you to transform your wall, uh, change the uh, elevation, move it, uh, elevate it to a different location. And also, if you would like to, you can change the height. If you click on the top corners or the bottom corners of this wall, you can say, okay, I would like to change its height for any sort of reason. And the same thing I would like to do with this one, so I can I change see. it freely. And of course, just as in case of the 2D, you can move your mouse, say that, okay, this should be, uh, I don't know, taller, and then you type the value. Uh, and this is how you change the, the, the height of the wall to a certain level or to a certain um, uh, location. So that's the only difference other, yes. other than that, uh, which, is, which is coming from the 2D, uh, the differences of the 2D and the 3D. Other than that, the uh, markers work just as the same as, as in the 2D. I think it's time to add the partition walls maybe. Yeah, and before we do that, uh, just one thing that I just remember that we should cover is that uh, when you select a wall, now you remember we talked about that you can break apart the wall, uh, but uh, there is one more thing which we will cover in detail later, but I think it's worth mentioning here yes, that yes, you can... changing thickness. <coughs> when you see 
the uh, this component mode. This is this is what, what what I'm talking about. You select an item and you see this icon. This means uh, if you click on it, something else will happen. Now I can still see the corners of this wall and I can see uh, the sides, but none of them is uh, solid. Both is uh, is dashed. And now if I click here and I select the same, actually we can see that the the, the the list is different. But if I click here and I say insert node and I kind of try to break it apart. I will not break it apart, but instead of that, I will change the wall mm -hmm. shape from the top of the view, which we will cover uh, uh, a little bit later in, in more detail. But this is also part of this marker uh, topic. So what was the thing that... Uh, partition <coughs> walls, let's, let's add them. It's, um, I'm especially <coughs> interested in that because uh, you would usually go, uh, go ahead and change the wall thickness and draw it that way, but it's a perfect time to demonstrate how the styles work. <coughs> so. Yeah. You're talking about these, now I have uh, a wall with a certain uh, thickness, so now I select another one with a different thickness, and then I click here, and if now the, uh, the, the orange line would be at the wrong location, I would again use this or the F5 key to change the uh, orientation That's of right. the wall thickness. Uh, and I think now I'm happy with this one, so I just refer to the mm -hmm. other part, and then I go and select the, the 10 millimeter wide, uh, 100 millimeter wide wall, and I just quickly start drafting uh, whatever I want. And need, now I need to flip the wall uh, reference line, so I just hit F5 twice, and I just click here. Uh, one and thing I to say add that when you, <laughs> when you terminate the wall command, you just uh, right click. Yeah, so that's there is, yeah it's, it's important, and you don't have to completely skip the wall command and start it again by using the, the escape key. But uh, now when you start it and you hit the right button, uh, just as you mentioned, you are still in the command, but at the starting point of the command. So now I again use the, uh, this green line, so I just refer uh, to this point, so they appear, and that's it. And then now I refer to this uh, non-existing intersection, and then I move my mouse uh, towards the right. I don't know, I just type the value or just say, okay, it should be some place here, and then here, and then there should be something here. And But actually here, I know the, the distance between the two walls. Yes. So um, there are two ways. One thing is the is the kind of conceptual way when you just you know just you just draft the walls and you just uh, say say that what you are interested in is the is the aspect ratio of the whole thing that the the, the 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 kind of size but you are not interested in perfect values. Uh, in that case, you just draft and change the, the distance later. I will cover that uh, soon. But if you already know that this distance should be 1.1. Then now, now it's the perfect time I can introduce this command here, yes. and that's the reference point, insert reference point. So I just click here, and I say, okay, now my reference point from where I would like to measure the start, starting point of my wall would is here. that corner, right? So I so just you click. click there. Nothing happens. I mean, nothing visual happens. But from now, if I move my mouse up and I type 1.1, and I say, okay, that's the value, enter. Then now mm. the software understood that it should be uh, measured from that point that I specified yes. earlier. But be aware because the, now the, the wall is added to that line, south of this line, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So now I need it. to flip it, yeah, the F5, and I flip it over, and then now I can just do it like this way, this way, and now I have this corner here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so hmm. now now we have have this part. But what's what's next in terms of sketching? There's a couple of things I, I want you to show, including offsetting walls from one another. Yeah, well, if you know the distance between these two walls, for example, yes. let's say I know it's 1.9 here, or I know the location of this her, this here. Let's say uh, let's let's go with this one. I just would like to change the location of this wall, so I say I'm, I would like to move it. But this is not an easy thing if I just click yes. on click on it because I'm picking it with the wrong side. So I just click here, I select move because that's what I want, what I use move from. Mm -hmm. And then I click here and here, and then now I moved it properly to the proper place. Uh, now if I know the distance between these two, I can select the first one and then control click on the second one. And this tells me the current distance between this point and this point. And if I'm happy with that, I just keep it. But if I just would like to change it, again, just as in case of the, the, the length of the wall, I just type the new value. It's, it's actually 0.9 perfectly. And then now 
the second right. uh, wall uh, changed its position because and it's important that the that the connection is kept. Yeah, so yeah, everything, yeah. everything moves. You can flip the direction of this arrow, right? Yeah, again, again, just as in case of the wall, you can just flip this uh, inertia uh, system, and then you can just say that okay, this is the one that keeps its position, and the other should uh, change uh, its location. So that's how you offset one wall to the other. Yeah. What about connections?